The May 22 eruption of Niragongo, that looming mountainous volcano in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, looked to be short-lived, its lava flows stopping their speedy, destructive march almost as soon as they began. But with all that potent seismic activity and satellite-based radar data suggesting that magma has been injected beneath parts of Goma, including the urbanized shores of Lake Kivu, scientists remain on edge. Although no second eruptive episode could be forthcoming, the chance that unpredictable magma water explosions could rock parts of the metropolis, and noxious volcanic gases could flood those shores, proved sufficiently scary enough to trigger last Thursday's evacuation of up to a million people, an exodus that's still ongoing. What's important to highlight at this stage is that, no matter what happens next, this has already been a disaster. The most obvious indicator of this is the wreckage left behind by last weekend's Kurt eruptive episode. Despite the fact that lava missed the city proper, 17 villages were still run through with fast-moving molten rock. Hundreds of homes were destroyed, water and electricity supplies were cut off, and at least one school was obliterated. Around 32 people were confirmed to have died, with a further 40 still missing. Thousands of children were separated from their parents. But the harm of this eruption, and its earthquakes, some of which have leveled buildings in Goma, goes beyond the obvious. The psychological trauma imparted on those visited by volcanic violence will last long into the future, especially in a place without decent interpersonal support from specialists in trauma. Those whose properties, families and friends have, for now, survived the most recent outpouring of lava have to somehow navigate the trauma of the uncertainty of the future, of being unsure whether they can return to their homes, being anxious that the next eruption will ruin or end their lives. As long as Goma sits on the flanks of Niragongo, that fear and worry will always be there, in the forefront or in the background of everyone's minds. The near-term future for those that have fled the city remains decidedly unclear. According to UNICEF, as many as 400,000 people have been displaced, with almost three-quarters of those being children. That people have been evacuated as a welcome development. In this case, it's far better to be cautious and for nothing to happen than to simply do nothing. But that's a lot of people to try to help in one of the poorest and most conflict-riddled parts of the world, and it's very likely that the infrastructure to provide everyone with support simply doesn't exist. Thousands of escapees crossed the border into Rwanda, but a large number of refugees headed to the nearby Congolese town of Sake, a place which is unfortunately haunted by cholera outbreaks, including one at present. Lest we forget, the chaotic evacuation also took place in the middle of the pandemic. 